Alright everyone, as you can see, I've recently upgraded my MacBook from 2 to 4 gigabytes of RAM. And some of you may be asking yourself, do you really need to upgrade from 2 to 4 gigs of RAM? Today I'm just going to talk about some of the practical aspects of going from 2 to 4, or maybe even 6, because as it turns out, the newer MacBooks and aluminum MacBook and MacBook Pro are capable of actually fully upgrading to 6 gigabytes of memory. Now, if you're in the market for memory, um, or especially for uh, DDR2 memory, now is probably the best time to get your memory, and here's why. Uh, whenever Apple does a transition, does a significant transition, uh, lots of time that tends to dictate what the rest of the market's going to do. For instance, they did that with the introduction of uh, 802.11 wireless networking, that was back in 1999. Uh, they started to introduce the uh, SuperDrive which is just DVD uh, rewritable drives. So a lot of the times, uh, Apple is just going to be on the uh, cutting edge of technology. So whatever they do in their lineup is going to affect the rest of the PC industry. And as a result, Apple recently switched to DDR3 memory in the most recent edition or update to the MacBook and MacBook Pro. So that being the case, um, if you're going to upgrade memory, now is the best time. Now. When, they, when I upgraded my memory, I just go to Newegg because there are no computer stores any, anymore. And Newegg generally does have the best prices. So at the time when I purchased my memory, I got this memory right here from Transcend. And I got it a couple weeks ago for $24.99. So there's an additional $3 savings now. So now you can get 2 gigs of RAM, a 2 gig module for $22.99, which is a great price. So altogether, and actually when I bought it, I got two of these, so it was like $49.98. But then living in Hawaii or living in Alaska, you're going to get hosed on the shipping, which I did. So I, I actually ended up spending almost as much on shipping as I did on an actual RAM module. Altogether, it cost me $70 to upgrade from 2 to 4 gigs with the shipping included. If you, you know, if not, you can get free saver shipping and not have to worry about that but Alaska and Hawaii were different were separate but still being able to go from two to four gigs of RAM for seventy dollars is pretty ridiculous and I gotta say I'm pretty uh, happy with it so far now the problem with the new MacBook and MacBook Pro aluminum is that they're using DDR3 memory so you're not gonna get that much of a price savings it's still pretty reasonable though I mean, $60 for a, a RAM chip that's compatible with your newest MacBook or MacBook Pro. So just buy it from Newegg. And I believe an 80s guy, I think he said in one of my comments, the only one rule about buying RAM is don't buy it from Apple. And that's true. Never buy RAM from Apple because if I think if I try going to store.apple.com, I think Apple's going to charge you something like $200, which is not that much of a difference but um, still it's it's significant you know I mean and given today's economy you want to save as much money as possible so actually they're charging hundred fifty dollars it's thirty dollars that's a tank of gas hopefully gas is getting cheaper so think of, think of it like that you're saving thirty dollars and you can get a tank of gas or you can have a nice dinner or do something like that so that's that's just the way that I would approach it but um, at least Apple is not gouging you like before. So anyways, uh, there are some practical aspects actually from going from 2 to 4 gigs of RAM. And uh, one of those is uh, virtual machines and virtual environments. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go away really quickly, set up my computer, and I'll be back to show you what I've done with my 4 gigs of RAM. One of the practical uses of having 4 gigabytes of memory is the ability to run multiple instances of virtual machines. Previously, I had done a video about VirtualBox, and uh, you can look it up in my video section. And as you can see here, I have two instances of VirtualBox running simultaneously. And for each instance, I've actually allocated one gigabyte of memory for each VirtualBox. And if I come over here, I'll show you exactly what's going on. You see in here, I have Windows XP Pro Service Pack 3 running, and I've given that one gig of RAM. And I also have Ubuntu 8.10 running, and that I've also given that one gig of RAM. So let's just switch over. So each of these operating systems has a gig of RAM allocated 
um, or sandbox to it. And you can see that right here in Activity Monitor. And the really useful thing about having so much memory available to you and the practicality of OS X being able to address so much RAM simultaneously is the fact that if you look at my free RAM, I still have over a gig of free RAM available to me. Roughly a gig and, uh, gig and a half. And if you look mostly at my swap file usage, I haven't hit the swap at all. Everything is running simultaneously in memory. And if I go down here and open things up, here you can see this is my instance of uh, Windows XP Professional. And here is my instance of Ubuntu 8.10. And here I'm just running a simple activity monitor in the background, and I can even go into seamless mode. And now I'm in Ubuntu seamless mode. And here I can go back and say open Internet Explorer, break out of this, uh, once again go into seamless mode with that again. And now <laughs> it gets really confusing because as you can see I have my my OS 10 uh, menu bar up here. I have my Ubuntu uh, menu bar in, on top of here. And at the bottom, I have my Windows XP Professional Start menu down here. So this is kind of ridiculous, but especially if you're a developer where you have to work in multiple environments simultaneously, this is actually pretty useful. And once again, I have Activity Monitor open, so I can just press F10, and it does expose. It does it a little bit funky because of the way that that uh, VirtualBox is tricking the operating system into hiding the desktop and creating the seamless mode. It does look a little bit funky, but it does work nonetheless, and that's one of the things that you can do with such a ridiculous amount of memory, 4 gigs of RAM. And once again, you can see I'm not hitting the swap, so... Here's my activity monitor. I can start Firefox, for instance. I can bring up Firefox in Ubuntu, and Firefox will start. And once again, this is 8.10. And from that, I can also go back to my Windows side. Let me just go back to Finder, expose out. Go back to my Windows side and use Internet Explorer for whatever I need to. So I can just run Windows Update go to Windows Update, and do that. So, really, I mean, 4 gigs of RAM, this is one of the few applica applications I can actually think of that's really going to use 4 gigs of RAM. And personally, I didn't think I would be using it. I probably am not going to be running it in this setup for that much longer, actually. If anything, what I plan on doing is I'm going to put uh, Windows in VirtualBox, keep Windows in VirtualBox, because I like to just have it running separately, but because Ubuntu uses the Compez Fusion and has the really nice graphical effects, right now the thing about VirtualBox is that there's no 3D acceleration. See, there's no wobbly windows going on. So you can't wobble the windows, you can't do the cube, you can't do the flaming effects. And that's because VirtualBox and a lot of VM software out there just doesn't have the 3D support or the drivers necessary to make that happen in a virtual environment. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to keep Windows in VirtualBox and probably move Ubuntu to its own separate boot camp partition and from boot camp I can just hit the alt key boot up into Linux and have all the nice graphical effects because really playing with those effects is just fun it's really a fun thing to do and that's that's what are really what I love doing so that's one of the practical aspects of 4 gigs of RAM you can see Ubuntu is using not hardly any memory and if I go back to my Windows instance uh, coming back to here, my Windows side, I can bring up Task Manager and show you that Task Manager also sees a full gig of RAM and there's 784 megabytes available for me also. So it's really cool stuff you can do, 4 gigs of RAM, get it while it's cheap. If you have an older style MacBook or an older MacBook that can address up to 4 gigs of RAM, Santa Rosa or Penryn, you know, it's only going to cost you 50 bucks if you're on the mainland, maybe 60 for shipping, expedited. And really, it's it's such a worthwhile investment. I didn't think I'd be using it, I, but, you know, it's nice to have. And eventually, when I do actually move everything, my Linux installation to my boot camp, I can then give Windows XP a full 2 gigabytes of RAM and it should be happy. So, 
Just something nice to look at, something to consider. Virtual box, it's free. I did my video on it. So, very confusing, but very fun also. Alright, that's about it. Peace.